Hi, my name is Gina and I really don't like it when misinformation spreads and makes people afraid when they shouldn't be. Okay, we need to have a conversation about glitter. I have been thinking about making this video for a long time now, ever since the ColourPop Uh Huh Honey palette came out and there was a, gl a pressed glitter in the palette. I saw Raw Beauty Christie's video on it and towards the end of the video she kind of inserted that she experienced some kind of itchiness in her eyes and she discovered that the glitter in the ColourPop palette was labeled as not intended for use around the eye area. Since then, I have heard a lot about glitter. I've heard a lot about glitter not being safe. I've heard a lot about ColourPop. I've heard a lot about what one should or should not put around your eyes and none of anything that I have heard has been factual or accurate. A lot of the information around glitter it, that exists on the internet, like if you were to do a Google search, is confusing and inaccurate and contradictory. It is my intention to make this the most comprehensive single guide to cosmetic glitter on the internet at the time of this filming. I have an eight page script over here on my laptop. So we're gonna be here for a minute. If you don't want to watch a really long, technically oriented video about glitter, I do still encourage you to absorb some of this information. So what I'm going to do is leave a table of contents in the description box with timestamps for each section of what we're going to talk about. And I'm also going to do a TLDR at the end just to cover the high points of what we discussed. All of my sources will be included in the description box below and hopefully within a few weeks of this video going live, I will also have a blog post with a copy of my script for those of you who prefer to read things. This is really important to me. It is really important to me to help people not be afraid when they don't need to be. And as such, I ask that you treat this video with careful consideration and listen with an open mind. I am not saying anything about what you should or should not do with your makeup or with glitter. I'm only here to give you the best information that I was able to find. For those of you who are along for the ride, let me give you a quick preview of what we're gonna talk about. The first thing we're gonna do is talk a little bit about me, about my background and what makes me qualified or not to talk about cosmetic glitter. Second, we'll talk about the United States laws and regulation around the cosmetics industry and the Food and Drug Administration's role in the cosmetic industry. In particular, it's important for understanding what the phrase not intended for use in the immediate eye area actually means. Third, we're going to talk about glitter in and of itself, what it's made of and the research that's been done on it and its safety. Finally, we're going to talk a little bit about cosmetic labelings, why they're there, how you should read and interpret them, and how to get a sense of what actually is safe for your eyes and what isn't. All of my sources for every factual statement that I make is linked down below. With all of that said, buckle up and let's get started. the first thing we're actually going to be talking about is me. And there is this fundamental question that I'm sure you're asking, which is what makes this girl qualified to talk about glitter? Which if you ask that question, thank you. You should be asking that question and you should be asking that question of anybody who talks about it. 
I come to this video with a few different repositories of knowledge that help me make it. First, I have a bachelor's in philosophy and political science. The political science aspect of my degree is focused in American politics, which helps me to understand and to process the laws and regulations around anything, but in this case, cosmetics. And because during my time in my undergraduate, I was planning on being a lawyer, I am also have a greater than average knowledge of laws, liability, legal versus illegal, all of that high level conceptual stuff that you'll find will be relevant as we talk about this. The second thing that's relevant here is that despite the fact that by the time I got to college I wanted to be a lawyer, I actually spent the vast majority of my life uh, wanting to be a chemist. And if you know anything about me from watching this channel uh, at this point, I, I don't really do things halfway. <laughs> um, so I spent most of my high school career immersed in the hard sciences. I took my first college level uh, science classes when I was 15, my sophomore year of high school. I took AP Biology and then I took AP Chemistry as well. And then in college, I also took an additional two semesters of chemistry. So while I am not a chemist and I am not an expert in science, nobody's an expert in science, but I do have a kind of baseline knowledge to understand and articulate some of the things that we're talking about here. At no point did I study cosmetic chemistry. At no point have I talked with a cosmetic chemist. I've never met one. The third thing is gonna sound a little weird because I don't think a lot of people think of this as a skill, but it really is. I'm really good at research. As someone who is in the hard sciences, as someone with a degree in philosophy and political science, I am very good at uncovering answers to things. In terms of my biases or like weaknesses that I have in this, some of them I already mentioned. I don't have a degree in chemistry. I don't work in the cosmetics industry at all. And I don't have like a cosmetic chemist resource in my life. Additionally, I am very skeptical and hesitant about the role of regulatory bodies in government and some of the general attitudes that I have about some of the regulatory stuff that we're going to talk about is definitely influenced by that. I will do my best to make it very clear when something is my opinion versus something that is a fact. But if there's any kind of value statement around whether or not a regulatory agency should do something, consider that to be an opinion rather than a fact. So to kind of wrap that up, I know a great deal about government regulation. I know a great deal about science and chemistry. I don't know everything about either of those topics. And I do have some biases against the government. <laughs> now that the, the bits about me are taken care of, let's move into talking about the FDA. If you're watching this from another country, welcome. I think that you will find this video useful. A lot of what I'm about to say about the United States regulatory apparatus will probably apply to your country and your region as well. But just keep in mind that what you're gonna be taking from this section is going to be more high level. And if you didn't know, FDA in the United States stands for the Food and Drug Administration, and it is the regulatory agency housed under the executive branch of our government that regulates food and drugs. Notice that I didn't say cosmetics. The FDA does not care about makeup. It is not in their purview and it is not something that they have the power to create 
regulations around, except for a couple of areas which we are going to talk about. So the reason why the FDA doesn't really care about makeup is partially because the United States doesn't really have a lot of laws about makeup. The way that regulatory agencies work in the United States is that their job is to take the laws that Congress passes and carry them out. And what that means from like the day to day varies a lot by agency and a lot by law. This is something that I think a lot of people, even in the United States, don't really understand. And that is that the cosmetics industry is by and large unregulated. For the handful of laws that do concern cosmetics, the FDA does get the job of enforcing them because it's kind of sort of in their wheelhouse. But by and large, the FDA is not concerned with cosmetics. It doesn't approve cosmetic ingredients outside of a couple of things, which we're going to talk about. And companies don't have to submit ingredient lists, formulas, or processes to the FDA for approval. Not a single bit of makeup that you have ever put on your face has been approved by the Food and Drug Administration. Not one. And whether or not that is a good, neutral, or bad thing is going to depend entirely on your value system, but I would challenge you to think of it this way, and this is getting somewhat into an opinion, but it's just more of a framework that I'm thinking, that I, that I kind of want to share with you. So let's say that oranges, the, the fruit orange, was just discovered yesterday. There's nothing different about it from the orange that we know today, that we drink the juice of, that we eat, that we put the, the peel in our teeth and make weird faces. Like it's the, same, it's the same orange. But if it appeared today, it would not be approved for consumption by the FDA. That doesn't change whether or not it is actually in real life safe to eat. It just means that the regulatory body has not taken the time to look at it and determine that it is safe. And this is something that I really want to stress here. This is not an opinion. This is a, an element of critical thinking that I want to pass on. The lack of approval is not the same thing as disapproval. Saying that something has not been approved for use around the immediate eye area is not the same thing as saying this is not safe for the immediate eye area. If I hold up this lipstick to you and say this has not been approved by me, that is not the same thing as saying that I disapprove it or that I dislike it. I could also know nothing about it. And that is always, always an option. And that is somewhat of what's happening with the FDA and glitter. Before we pivot to talk about glitter itself, I do want to cover what the FDA does do in the cosmetic industry because it's good information to know and you should know it. The United States has three points of law around cosmetics. It can't be known to definitively cause harm. It can't be mislabeled. The label can't be different than what's actually inside it. And the colors, the colorants that are used are subject to FDA regulation. How the FDA acts around these three points is very limited because again, cosmetics isn't really in its purview. If a makeup brand was shown to be selling products that were mislabeled, I don't think that the FDA could go like raid, its, raid the factory. I, I don't think that's a thing that the FDA can do. They could go get a court order for something like that to happen or it would help in any kind of lawsuit that someone would file against them. But for the large, for the most part, the FDA doesn't really have 
like a makeup police that goes and gets people in trouble. In terms of things causing harm, the FDA acts on the industry kind of as like a information broadcaster. So for example, if wax, for whatever reason, was found to be harmful, the FDA would put out a notice to the cosmetics industry, the food industry, et cetera, saying, this is harmful, We've, we have good evidence to say that this hurts people, you're not allowed to use it anymore. But if a cosmetic industry still chose to use wax in their products, it's not like the FDA is gonna like send makeup police after them. There would be repercussions and we'll talk about what those would be in the last part of the video, but they wouldn't necessarily be fined or the CEO wouldn't necessarily be taken to jail. No, nothing really in the terms of like what we would think of as a criminal action. In terms of the color additives and colorants that people are and aren't allowed to use, there's like a whole other video that could be made on that. For what I'll say is that in general, there is a list of naturally occurring colorants that the FDA has that has already been approved and anyone can use them. There is a separate list of petroleum-derived colorants that has to go through a separate approval process for it to be used. And I believe the list is of which ones have been through that process. And if someone wants to use a, another one, they have to like go through. And there's like a whole section on that. Within those tables of approved colorants, there is those that are approved for general use. So around your body, there are those that are approved for use on the face and lips. And there is another one that is for use around the eyes. We'll talk about that in more detail in a second, but a quick note here is that if you're using, for example, a, a vegan red eyeshadow, this is the most typical one, that, that eyeshadow or that product, it's generally called a pressed pigment, will have that disclaimer, not intended for use around the immediate eye area, because by what few regulations the FDA has, companies are not allowed to sell products that are marketed for the eye with that colorant. But as we all know, people use them all the time and it's perfectly safe. So that's a great example of kind of what I was talking about in the previous section. Keep in mind, if someone is saying to you, are glitters or eye safe? They're not saying to you, the FDA has put a stamp on this glitter. That's not what that means. Very likely what it means is that we're using terephthalate plastic and the colors we used on it are on the FDA's list of colorants that are approved for the immediate eye area. It doesn't mean that the FDA has said, yes, that's safe. So that was a lot. And that was a lot of information that I think a lot of my audience is really not gonna be familiar with. So let me take a step back and review. The FDA doesn't care about makeup. That's not its job. That's not what it does. And nothing that you have ever used as makeup has been approved by the FDA outside of whatever colorants it has. Uh, two, uh, speaking of color, in the United States, the colorants that cosmetics use can only be those that appear on the FDA's list. With regard to the substance of a thing, what it's made out of, the only thing the FDA cares about is whether or not it has been shown to definitively cause harm. For a lot of things, the FDA is really only a reference point for that kind of information. And if they do it anyway, the FDA doesn't really come in and get them. So when you put all of that together, there is a very important point that comes from all of that. There is no such thing as glitter that the FDA has approved to be safe around the eyes. But that does not mean that it is objectively unsafe. It just means 
that the FDA hasn't said anything about it and they probably never will. Just because the FDA hasn't approved something doesn't mean it's going to harm you. And it doesn't mean that you can't determine for yourself whether or not you wanna use it. And that's what we're gonna talk about right now. talk about glitter and your eyes. A glitter has basically two components. The particle itself, the, the chunk, and the colorant that's used, or a lot of times a mix of colorants. I do think it's a safe assumption that ColourPop is not going to use colorants that are going to get it in any kind of trouble with the FDA or open it up to a lawsuit. But just for a, a quick check, I did go through just a handful of their press glitters, did a quick spot check with the colorants list, and everything that I've seen, at least so far, checks out with the list of colors that are approved for use around the eyes. So let's talk about the particles themselves, because I think that's what a lot of people think makes a glitter not approved or unsafe, and that's actually not true either. From all of my research, cosmetic glitters are made from a substance called polyethylene terephthalate, which is a substance from a larger family of substances called phthalates. It, it's plastic. It's all you have to worry about. It's a kind of plastic. There are other things in the cosmetic industry that use different kinds of phthalates because phthalates is a category of plastics and there are different kinds of phthalates underneath that. But for right now, we're just talking about the phthalates that are in glitter. Phthalates in other forms is not immediately a concern. With plastics, the actual tangible concern isn't necessarily always scratching of the eye. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, it's actually toxicity. If you remember from grade school, plastics are made from petroleum, and the petroleum in its raw form and in lots of its processed forms is actually toxic to human tissue when it's on the inside. So if it gets into your body and dissolves in some way, it, the toxins could be released into your system. This does not happen with terephthalate, terephthalate polymers. They are completely non-toxic. In fact, terephthalate polymers are used for surgical sutures. They are used for internal body implants, and those do have to be approved by the FDA. The plastic that is that composes a cosmetic glitter is completely safe, both inside and outside of your body. This is relevant because we're actually about to talk about eye irritation. One of the organizations that does research on cosmetic ingredients is called the Cosmetics Ingredient Review Board. And in 2012, they published a paper specifically about phthalate polymers used in cosmetics and used in cosmetic glitter. They ran their own study, and I will include that link below, and they actually confirmed the same thing that they found in 1985 when they did a similar study. These plastics do not cause eye irritation at a statistically significant rate. I will also include a link about statistical significance down below. Statistical significance is a kind of barometer to, for scientists to say, we found some positive results in our data, but is, was it enough to say this is a definite pattern? And it's actually a very important and very full, like solid statistical measure that all scientists use. Every, every scientific conclusion that you have heard about has been measured against this. It's a part of the scientific process. For the vast majority of people in their tests, they did not cause any kind of eye irritation. It did not matter if the glitter was square or some other kind of shape. It didn't matter if the subjects had sensitive eyes. It didn't matter if they put it on their eyes every single day for four weeks. There was not a, there was not, 
Fun fact, I also really have a hard time saying statistically significant. There was no statistically significant sign of eye irritation. Terra phthalate glitters are not dangerous for your eyes. I got that study down below, feel free to click on it. Before you go like bedazzle your eyes with glitter, I hope that you're asking yourself and you're asking me this question, Gina, if everything that you said is true, why are people so afraid? This is more speculation on my end than anything else, but I do kind of have some thoughts on that. There's kind of a bit of superstition around glitter that I think has originated from a really, really viral Reddit post that happened a few years ago. The general story is that this woman was playing with her kid, they were doing crafts, and she got some glitter in her eye. In fact, I think her the, the title of her post was like, her life was ruined thanks to glitter. And there are two really, really important things to know about that. One, she was using craft glitter. This is something that I haven't talked a ton about in this video, but this distinction is important. Cosmetic glitters are made with terra phthalates. Craft glitters can be made from a lot of different things, and sometimes they are coated with metal to give them that shine. And this can be very dangerous. Number two is, like I said, this, this poor woman uh, got glitter in her eye and her cornea got scratched from either the metal coating on the glitter or something else entirely. That in and of itself is kind of a freak accident because your eyes have lots of defenses to keep stuff like that from happening. But after that, her eye got infected and the doctors could not get the infection out. It couldn't they couldn't save her eye and she lost her eye. And I think that, first of all, like in her post, in her Reddit post, like if you read the captions of her Im Imger, Im Imger posts, like she says herself, like this was a freak accident. And that's very much true and it's really important for people to remember that. Even if you got craft glitter in your eye, it's pretty unlikely that you're gonna get a scratched cornea from it. And even if you get a scratched cornea, it's very unlikely that you're gonna have an infection that's so tenacious that it can't be defeated by antibiotics or doctors or anything else. What happened to this poor woman was a fucking tragedy. It's awful. It is so awful. And her pictures were dramatic and gruesome and you know the the internet machine loves that shit and so I, I think that as the internet does this this idea of glitter uh, of craft glitter as dangerous for the eyes kind of filtered out into the internet zeitgeist and like a really long extended game of telephone it kind of got warped into literally anything that you might consider to be glitter and that's just not the case I think part of that internet zeitgeist around glitter is also this idea that the size or the shape of a glitter matters and whether or not it's eye safe or not. And from all of my research, I have not found a single thing that substantiates that. The size or shape of a glitter doesn't really make something eye safe or not eye safe. I think that part of how this came to be is that like as people were kind of comparing craft glitter with cosmetic glitter, they noticed that like terephthalate glitters have like a beveled edge to it. And like, that's kind of what people mean when they say like shape and, and size. But again, I, all of the people that I heard saying this, like did not cite any sources. They didn't provide any links. There's nothing I have found from the cosmetics ingredient review board or from the FDA that say anything about the size or shape of glitter. I can say from my sort of biology education that actually 
in a lot of ways, larger glitters would be safer for use around your eyes than smaller ones. And that's because it's easier to get out. Well, it, it's easier to prevent getting in your eye in the first place. And if it does get in your eye, it's easier to get out. That's actually, that that's perfect. That's great. You, you, you know, I'm not worried about this getting in my eye. Like, this isn't not eye safe because it's big. The fact that it's big makes it much safer for my eyes, relatively speaking. Your eyes have a ton, a ton of natural defenses to keep it from being damaged. And this is something that I also see a lot when people talk about like their experience with glitter and this, the, the things that they experience be, sort of being proof that, that glitter is bad. And this is kind of one of my beefs with uh, Robbie D. Christie's video. I will, at 110%, nothing should be going in your eyes, nothing. Don't put anything in your eyes. Don't put glitter in your eyes. Don't put makeup in your eyes. Don't put mascara, like just don't do it. Nothing should be going in your eyes. When something comes into your eye, your eyes like, holy fuck, get the fuck out. Get the fuck out, like go away. And how it accomplishes this is different depending on what it is. To prevent things from getting into your eyes in the first place, you have your eyelashes. And actually your eyelashes are really good at this. And, it's re and they're really good at catching small particles of things from getting in your eyes. In fact, when I was putting my glitter on this evening, I messed up the liner on this side and just put too much. And there's a shit ton of glitter just caught in my eyelashes now because it's doing its job. The other thing that it does, is your eyes water. When your eyes water, they're trying to just kind of get stuff out. That's what they're supposed to do. Then also that kind of itchiness that you feel that uh, when you feel the particle in your eye and you like have this like desire to like rub your eye, that's another part of it as well because you rubbing your eye is gonna move that thing around to like uh, this part under here, which I believe is like more or less kind of a reservoir where kind of stuff gets out of harm's way and then as your eyes water, you kind of cry them out. You experience a lot of those symptoms of your eyes watering, your eyes itching, all of that stuff, probably every single day when you put on makeup, probably every single day. And you disregard them as normal because they are. But when it happens when you've been using glitter, you don't because you've kind of got this little seed of fear in you that says, oh, I'm gonna die, you know, like, oh my God. And that's another part of kind of like what I wanna address here is like that, that fear, that seed doesn't necessarily need to be there. If you get something in your eye, it's supposed to not feel good. And it's supposed to, your eye is working to get it out. And that's perfectly normal and perfectly safe. And that happens with way, way, way more than you probably realize. If you're doing any kind of eye makeup at all, you are absolutely getting things in your eyes and your eyes have you covered. They've got you covered. So just chill a bit. And I understand if that's like not a risk you wanna take. Again, like don't bedazzle your eyes with glitter. Like don't take unnecessary risks, but also have a good idea of what a, is a risk and what isn't. The next in the list of questions that I hope y'all are asking as I talk is, all right, Gina, if all of this is true, why does ColourPop have that label on its pressed glitters? The phrase that is kind of under consideration here is, quote, not intended for use in the immediate eye area, end quote. If you recall earlier, I said that there would be consequences if someone was caught using a colorant that wasn't on the FDA's list. It probably just wouldn't be that the FDA like came and got them. That's, that's relevant here and that's what we're gonna circle back to. I think that what I'm about to talk about here is kind of best exemplified by a hypothetical. 
let's say that ColourPop doesn't have the eye area statement and I put one of those glitters on my eyes and it somehow hurts me. Let's, let's go all the way to the extreme and say that what happened to that lady on Reddit happens to me. My cornea got scratched, my eye got infected, the doctors couldn't control the infection and had to remove my eye. Let's just go full drama. If that happens, I say, well, fuck those guys. They should have to pay my medical bills because it's their fault that this happened to me. So I take ColourPop to court. I say to the judge, okay, look, this product clearly wasn't safe for the eye area. Here are all of these other people that this happened to. This clearly is the product and not me and it's not random chance. ColourPop is liable for my damages, for the, the things that happened to me and I deserve compensation. And the judge goes like, well, shit, you've got a point. And then ColourPop goes, well, wait, there's this research from the Cosmetics Ingredient Review Board that says that plastic is safe for eye use and the colors that we put on it were on the FDA's list. We did everything right here. There's no way we could have known it wasn't safe for her eyes. We're not responsible for this. At that point, the judge has a decision to make. Both sides raise reasonable points and the judge has to figure out who is responsible for what happened. I am not familiar enough with torts to even try and shoot from the hip about who would be responsible, who would be liable in that situation, but I can tell you that ColourPop probably doesn't even want to get that far. So they put this statement there to save themselves from any question about liability. It could very well be the case that this statement is entirely unnecessary to begin with and there's this kind of like old guard like habit in the cosmetic industry of always putting that on them. It could be that some of the glitters use colorants that aren't safe for the immediate eye area and they just put it on all of them so they don't have to modify their packaging. That would save them a shit ton of money just putting it out there. It could also be that it's preemptive in that they know that they would get a lot of questions for customers and they can just point to this statement, which would also save them a lot of money. That kind of statement could be required for another region that ColourPop sells in. It couldn't be, it could just not be about the United States at all or the FDA at all. It could be that there is a country that ColourPop sells in that has said you're not allowed to use terephthalate polymers or that says no you have to positively prove that something is safe before you put it in a cosmetic or before you put it in something that could be used around the eyes like there are so 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 many possibilities of what could happen that i i don't know and ColourPop would have to tell us it's not bad or wrong or illegal or anything to that effect to put that statement on something that you don't have to put it on. But no matter what or why that statement is there, the statement not intended for use around the eye area is not the same statement as this is dangerous for your eyes. They are completely different statements. They serve completely different purposes and people really, 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 really need to understand that. So with all of that said, and possibly a lot more than really needed to be said, let's wrap this up. was a, a labor of love and a lot of work to put together. But again, if, if, if you needed the high points, uh, here they are. There is no such thing as FDA approved cosmetic products of any kind. The FDA doesn't really do that. And there aren't a lot of laws in the United States that regulate makeup. The FDA only approves the colorants that cosmetics use. Outside of that, the only thing that they are concerned with is 
when things have been shown to be harmful, it's important to understand that a lack of evidence is not the same thing as evidence of lack. Cosmetic grade glitters are made from a plastic that has been approved by the FDA for use in surgical sutures and things that go inside of your body. So toxicity is not a concern. The Cosmetic Ingredient Review Board has done several studies on plastic glitters in use in cosmetics and has found absolutely no statistically significant irritation or problems with them in their studies. And this data goes back about 35 years. Glitter size and shape have nothing to do with whether or not they are approved for your eyes or safe for your eyes. Companies that sell glitter put a label like that on them for a large number of possible reasons that we don't know, but broadly it is to save them trouble, whether it is legal trouble, whether it is question trouble or product design trouble. As I said in the introduction, I'm really hoping for this video to be the most comprehensive single resource on cosmetic glitter that's currently on the internet. There is so, so much really awful information out there and it's all really difficult to sort through. And I really want this video to help people feel empowered to make whatever decision they feel is best for them. And I hope that none of my like random ranting makes anybody feel like that if they said to me, I don't feel safe putting glitter on my eyes, that I wouldn't say like, I respect that choice for you as long as you have all of the information, like as long as you have all the right information, because that is how I feel. I understand that for a lot of people, how they feel about something is more important than the cold hard facts and a prior risk assessment is really difficult to undo and I do understand that and that's valid. As I said before, all of my resources will be linked down at the bottom, but I do want to give a really special shout out to MBA Cosmetics. Their statement on glitter is easily the most accurate that I have found. It's just a little incomplete, but they do cite their sources from the FDA and that statement in and of itself was the most helpful in getting me started in finding these answers. I have that page linked below. It's got some HTML problems, but they deserve a lot of credit for being thorough. And I would implore you that if you are hearing someone else talk about glitter or anything, but in particular cosmetic glitter and making statements about whether or not something is or isn't safe for your eye, that if they also don't cite credible sources, I implore you to not trust that statement. Before I let you go to Go Forth and Glitter, I want to talk a little bit about the comment section in this video. I have no idea how this video will do or if it will do at all, but unlike the comment sections in my other videos, we're actually going to have some pretty strict guidelines about what is and what isn't allowed, and I will be doing my best to moderate my comment section. So first of all, I want to say that I did the best I could with what I found. If I am wrong about anything, that is 100% okay. I want to know if something that I have found is inaccurate, outdated, or contradicted by another equally valid source. Absolutely, I want to know please do leave me a comment down below. That said, if you want to say that I am wrong, you need to come with receipts. You need to cite a credible resource. What that looks like in this arena is the FDA or a cosmetics ingredient review study of some kind from a reputable academic institution or a reputable industry institution as well. 
I understand that there are a lot of anecdotal stories about someone's mom's brother's nephew's sister who broke her leg after she used cosmetic glitter and those stories are valid and your feelings about them are valid but they don't have a place in this conversation and I want to be very clear on that. If people are commenting saying that I'm wrong because someone that they know used glitter and their eye was hurt, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to write a reply to that comment saying, your story is valid, but it doesn't really have a place in this conversation. Please include a link to a valid source or put a disclaimer at the beginning of your comment that this is anecdotal and does not necessarily apply to everybody. And I'll give that some person some time to reply. And if they don't, I will remove their comment. This is an area that has generated a lot of fear and I really don't want this video, this page, this place on the internet to be a place where fear mongers come to do their work. And I'm just not going to let that happen. Feel free to express your stories in your own forum. I hope that you liked this video. I hope that you found it useful. If you did, please do give me a thumbs up and leave a comment down below as long as it conforms to the guidelines that I have set. If you like me and my flowing red hair, please do subscribe to the channel. I upload on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays for the foreseeable future. You can find me on the internet at Faces by Gina. I have an Instagram and a Facebook where I upload every single day. I hope that you are having a great day wherever you are, and please remember to think deeply, critically engage the world around you, and be good to yourself and be good to other people. I will see you out there on the internet. Bye.